okay, I really believe in this process, process, process. I believe in so much that that's the name of our show, The Process. And a lot of people, creative people especially, when I say, you know, uh, you need to have a process, a formula, and they get really upset at me. Like, there is no formula for creativity. Don't try to make it like this robotic binary thing. You know that there is a link between competency and mastery and self-confidence. So instead of looking at a formula and being angry, look at it as a formula for success. To have a repeatable process hopefully means that you have predictable results. And athletes are religious about their rituals. Boxers have a pre-fight routine. And the great golfer, Jack Nicholas, he was famous for his pre-shot dance. And during one of the tournaments, a psychologist timed what he did. From the time in which he picked up his club, walked over, looked at the ball, looked at the hole, came, did his whole little thing, that it was not more than one second difference from every single hole he played. He was that consistent, and that's why he wins. Process will help you to know your formula. And this is the difference between positive thinking and positive knowing. Like, we all think positive thoughts, but I know my formula works. I use it time and time again. I know my formula for doing a talk. It's brutal, but I know it and I need it. I got to go to the bathroom 20 minutes before, I got to do some stretching before, and I, I got to get to know the people in the room and acclimate. When I don't do that, my game is thrown off. So here's how you could master your process and come up with a creative formula. The best way I can tell you how to do this is to teach. If you want to understand your own creative process, try explaining it to somebody. It becomes a lot more difficult. So here's my formula for a creative formula. So I want you to think about this. Here are a few prompts for you to process. Where do you feel the most stimulated and creative? Where is it? Is it at home? Is it in your car? Is it while going for a long walk, a hike, working out at the gym? Where is it? How do you come up with ideas? That's a tricky one. How do you judge good ideas from bad ones? My students ask me this all the time. So when I'm doing a critique, most of them accept that the critique is just true. Like word from God to my mouth, it's true. Every once in a while a student will challenge me and ask me, I agree with what you're saying, but can you explain why you said that was elegant and that's not? And I had to sit there and think, well, how did I come up with that? What's my thought process like? And I had to break it down and share with the students. With whom do you feel the most creative around? Do you have a creative muse? It could be a cat. It could be a thing. My thing right now is when I'm writing, I like to listen to Spotify and I go into the mood and I pick brain food. It's the same 73 songs. There's no lyrics, I just listen to it, and that's what I jam on. And the last formula, what conditions were present when you were in your flow state? You guys know the flow state? You might not be familiar with the term, but your flow state is when time seems to disappear, and you're the most creative and productive person that you are. So what conditions were present? Write that down. They're called flow states. Now some of them, some of us call them runner's high, being in the zone being unconscious, if you happen to be a basketball player, if you're a beatnik jazz musician, you were in the pocket. Over the years, they've had dozens of different names. Flow is the name scientists prefer. Flow is technically defined as an optimal state of consciousness. This is a state of consciousness where we feel our best and we perform our best. And I think most of us have at least a passing experience with flow. These are those moments of total absorption. We get so focused on what you're doing that everything else disappears. Action and awareness merge. Sense of time dilates. That means sometimes it slows down, sometimes it speeds up and five hours will pass by in like five minutes. A sense of self disappears, self-consciousness goes along with it. And throughout all aspects of performance, mental and physical, go through the roof. So here's my story. About five years into starting my company, I was starting to feel burnt out. I hadn't taken a, a single vacation at that point. I was working nonstop. And Tom was a new graduate from Art Center, and I brought him in, and he quickly grew from being a junior designer to an art, dire art director. Tom was smart, he was a good designer, and he was good looking too. 
So even though I promoted him within the company, I started to feel threatened by Tom. I started to feel like, you know what? This motion game, it eats you up. Like, you don't know the cool things. You don't know what's cutting edge anymore. Like, the things that I was doing started to feel dated. And that's when the burnout hit me really hard. I was like, you know what, Tom? I'm going to take a sabbatical. You lead the company. This is when I was, like, the most insecure. So this is my employee now, believe it or not, who's making me feel this way. And so I decided to go on a three-month sabbatical. And it just so happened that I was offered a teaching position at Otis. And what comes with teaching and doing anything new, you have your first day jitters, it's all weird. I'm nervous, and they could tell that I'm nervous. But something interesting, wonderful starts to happen. Week two, week three, week four, week five. The students would show me their work, and I would critique it. And they forced me to examine my own thought process. And I realized something. I forgot what it is that I knew. And what I knew was a lot. And I shared with them, and I helped them to grow. And this taught me I have a lot more to offer than what I've been doing at the office. And so you know that cliche where they say, a teacher will say this, I have learned more from my students than I've ever taught them. Super true. And I have to tell you, that it's been 22 years, I've never looked back. I've never had that moment of self-doubt like the way I had then. That's all I have for you guys today. Thank you very much.